hello students uh, today we are going to see uh, normal distribution under normal distribution i am going to explain you uh, the central limit theorem so today's section that that is the fourth section i told you know that fourth section i am going to explain you the sampling distribution and the central limit theorem mm, so what is mean by the sampling distribution so, so our objective here in this presentation is how to find the sampling distributions and uh, verify their um, properties uh, how to verify their properties these are all the things we are going to see uh, that is how to find the sampling distribution and verify the properties and how to interrupt the central limit theorem and how to apply the central limit theorem to find the probability of a sample mean uh, so what is my sampling distribution the probability distribution of a sample statistics okay so we are considering the sample statistics straight away and we are doing the probability distribution for that uh, it formed when the sample of size n are repeatedly taken from a population. Uh, so here the example sampling distribution of a sample mean. So in the sample statistics we can consider sample mean or sample variance like that. So here we are considering, uh, here I am on example I gave for sample means. Uh, sampling distribution of sample means here, see uh, we are considering various sample with their sample mean as x1 bar, x2 bar, x3 bar, like that. So the whole population, which is considered as a population, the whole thing with the mu and sigma. So the sampling distribution consists of the values of the sample means like that, x1 bar, x2 bar, x3 bar, and so on. So what are the properties of sampling distribution? The first one, the mean of the sample means is represented by mu x bar and is equal to the population mean mean please note this here here the mean of the sample mean is represented as mu x bar and this mu x bar is equal to please note it here the mu x bar is equal to um, mu the whole population value so for each uh, sample we are considering one x1 bar sample mean no so for all the sample means i am considering uh, i am taking the mean for that that is called mu x bar so please note in mu x is different from mu x bar so mu x bar is the mean of the sample means this is the mean of the sample but here this is the mean of the sample mean, mean of the sample mean, which is equal to the mu, that is mu x, okay. The population mean, mu represent the uh, mean of the population and x bar represent the mean of the sample, okay, I, you know that. So, for each sample you will have this mean and the mean of the sample means that is called mu x bar. I hope that you can understand. Then second thing. Uh, the standard deviation of the sample mean. The standard deviation of the sample means all the sample means the standard deviation mu sigma x bar is equal to the population standard deviation sigma divided by the square root of sample size n. Please note it the mean of the sample means is equal to the population mean but the standard deviation of the sample means is equal to sigma by root n that sigma by root n is called the standard error of the mean. So uh, here I had explained you the sampling distribution of the sample mean. The population values consist of the only four values 1, 3, 5, 7 are written on the slips of the paper and put it in a box. Two slips of paper are randomly se selected with replacement. So we, we will take again and it's, there is a possibility of taking one many times, three also many times, five like that. Okay. For that we need to find the mean variance and standard deviation of the population. Here you will have that uh, mean of the population you need to add up everything and divide it by 4 because the total number of uh, uh, values for the population is 4 so you will get uh, so this is the formula sigma x means 1 plus 3 plus 5 plus 7 divided by 4 so 8 9 16 by 4 you will get so the answer comes as 4 that's why you are getting the population mean as 4 and variance 
uh, you need to use this formula i already explained how to find the variance so in that same method we need to apply the same method and find the variance as phi okay then standard deviation if you take the square root of the variance you will get the standard deviation as 2.236 so the graph of the probability histogram of the population value this is for population you are doing so you are getting the uniform distribution because all values have the same probability of being selected here uh, out of four one has been selected no so all the uh, values will have the probability as 1 by 4 that's why you are getting the uniform distribution uh, so now I'm going to explain you the sample means mean of the each sample we are going to find out and then we are need to find out mean of the sample means so list all the possible sample of size n equal to 2 and calculate the mean of the sample each sample so like that so so two we are picking two times no so in, in for the two times you, are, you can get 1 comma 1 or 1 comma 3 1 comma 5 1 comma 7 so like the, these are all the possibility of uh, selection uh, sample mean for that is see this is the their uh, sample mean here you will get 1 plus 1 divided by 2 you will get 1 here 1 plus 3 divided by 2 that's why you are getting 2 here 1 plus 5 divided by 2 which is 3 so for all these things you can get the value like this these means form the sampling distribution of the sample means okay this is called sampling distribution of sample means so now we are going to construct the probability distribution of sample means for each uh, sample means this is the probability you can get it so how much it is repeated so here one is repeated uh, sample mean for one is rep uh, you will get one time for two it gets us two times but for three it for three times but five it comes us three times see please here see here five it comes us one two three times okay and four comes us one two three four times and seven comes as one only one times the seven comes so that's why here the pro frequency it has been written like this these are the frequency so out of this frequency you can get the probability value then after that find the mean variance and standard deviation for the sampling distribution so the formula is the same the population mean gives you the uh, mean of the sampling distribution as 4 there is a formula for sigma x bar square which is sigma x by n uh, here the n value was uh, 2 uh, for 5 okay 16 sample means we are finding the mean variance and standard deviation so sigma x is 5 5 by 2 you will get 2.5 if you take the square root for 2.5 you can get the value for the standard deviation as 1.581 so these results satisfying so here sigma square is you need to use the sigma square okay uh, this to satisfy the properties of the sampling distribution of sample mean like this okay uh, by using the formula and also using the uh, values of this one you can get the same value both the better and then graph the probability of pro probability histogram for the uh, sampling distribution of a sample mean you will get the histogram like this which gives you the normal distribution the shape of the graph is symmetric and also looks like a uh, bell shape see bell shape it looks like a bell shape so it approximates the normal distribution here the graph it tells you approximate the normal distribution so now I am going to explain you the central limit theorem from this result that is if the sample of sizes n is greater or equal to 30 means which is the large sample okay if it is lesser than 30 we will call as a small sample okay if the n is greater or equal to that is if the sample size is large or drawn from any population with mean mu and standard deviation sigma you will have a curve like this which is not a normal distribution 
but then the sampling distribution of sample means approximates the normal distribution if you are finding the sampling distribution for the sample means it approximates the normal distribution so if you greater the if the n value is more more than that is the normal size sample size the better the approximation okay if you are a sample is larger uh, then you will get a, a better approximation of normal distribution that is called the uh, normal uh, sorry central limit theorem uh, main objective of the central limit theorem is if the population itself is normally distributed uh, second thing the, uh, the sampling distribution of a sample mean is normally distribution for any sample size here please note it for any sample size here and if your population is normally distribution then your sampling distribution will also be normally distribution mm. so in either case the sample distribution of sample mean has a mean equal to the population mean please note it in either case but the sampling distribution of sample mean has a variance equal to 1 by n times the variance of the population okay 1 by n times you need to put sigma square by n 1 by n times the population variance and the standard deviation is equal to the population standard deviation divided by the square root of n which is the standard error of the mean okay so this is a result summary of the central limit theorem so i will repeat it please note the central limit theorem please note it so first first point in central limit theorem if your uh, uh, sample uh, is large large in size we can get the better approximation to a normal distribution okay see if before it is it looks it is not a normal distribution but uh, if it is uh, if the greater the sample size you will get a uh, approximates the sampling distribution of a sample mean approximates a normal distribution if the population itself is a uh, normally distributed then your sampling distribution will also be a normal distribution of any size of the sample size here yeah. okay keep it in mind the formula and all uh, okay so the brief of the central limit theorem any population distribution any population distribution which is not in normal but if your uh, sample means distribution of sample means if your sample size is more than 30 means uh, it approximates the normal distribution second point if your uh, population itself is a normal distribution your sampling distribution uh, will also be a normal distribution at any size n yeah. okay that's the meaning of the central limit theorem so we will sh uh, have one example related to the central limit theorem cellular phone bills for residents of a city have a mean of dollar 63 and a standard deviation of dollar 11 random samples of 100 cellular phone bills are drawn from this population and the mean of each sample is determined find the mean and standard error of the mean of the sampling distribution then sketch a graph of the sampling distribution of a sample mean so distribution for all cellular phone bills it looks like like this okay so they never mention it is a sam normal distribution so therefore the population is not in normal distribution so the mean of the sample distribution is equal to the population mean as usual so you will have that uh, mean of the sampling distribution as 63 as same as the population mean uh, but the standard error of the mean is equal to the population standard divided by the square root of n so you can use the sigma by root n which is 11 by square root of 100 this 1.1 since the sample size is oh i didn't know see even though they didn't mention the problem the normal distribution but the sample size is more than 30 so it approximates the normal distribution that's why we are using the formula the same formula sigma by root n here uh, so the sampling can be approximated by normal distribution with the mu x bar as dollar 63 and 1.10 so this is the graph for the distribution of sample mean with n equal to 100 okay it resembles it approximates the normal distribution the second problem the training heart rates of all 20 years old athletes are normally distributed so here the population itself is a normally distributed with the mean of 135 beats per minute and standard deviation of 18 beats per minute the random samples of size 4 are drawn from this population 
So here the sample size is 4. It is not a large sample. It is a small sample even though for any value of n if the population is normally distributed then the sampling distribution will also be normally distributed according to the central limit theorem. Okay. Uh, this much n value is 4 or drawn from this population the mean of each sample is determined find the mean and standard error of the sampling distribution then sketch a graph of the sampling distribution of a sample mean here the distribution of population training hot rates is a normal distribution so your graph looks like this then we are going to find the mean of the sampling distribution which is same as the population mean so, so that's why it has the same value as 135 next we need to find the standard error by using the formula to get the uh, standard deviation of a uh, sampling distribution which is equal to the population standard deviation divided by the square root of n so you are getting the value as 9 uh, so by using this value if you uh, plotting a graph you so it, it comes as a normally distribution since the population is normally distribution the sampling the sample mean is also a normal distribution so you are getting this uh, graph uh, so that's all the next one how to transform the x bar to a z score we, we already know that the formula is x bar minus mu by sigma but here in place of mu we need to use mu x bar and here it is sigma x bar the formula for so mu x bar is same as the population mean but sigma x bar gives you the standard error sigma by root 10 by using that we can transform the value so now the probabilities for the sampling this how to find the probabilities for the sampling distribution the graph shows the we will sh uh, we will do one example here the graph shows the length of the time uh, length of time people spend driving each day you randomly select 50 drivers age 15 to 19 okay mm, so you randomly selected 50 drivers which have the age 15 to 19 what is the probability that the mean time they spend driving each day is between 24.7 and 25.5 minutes assume that's the sigma value they have given us 1.5 minutes okay so please note all these values so we, we, we are going to start the problem from the central limit theorem the sample size is greater than 30 here so therefore if it is greater than 30 your uh, sampling distribution see sampling distribution will approximate the normal distribution so that you can use the formula like this so even mu x bar value becomes 25 and sigma x bar value for that we need to use this formula to get the value like this so it approximates the normal distribution see after you get this we need to transform the x values x bar value to the z by using the formula z equal to x bar minus mu mu divided by sigma x bar mu x bar divided by sigma x bar so here the x bar they are asking between the value 24.7 to 25.5 this is the um, x value then this x bar value should be transformed to z value by using this formula x bar minus mu by sigma by root 10 so it gets transformed to minus 1.41 and the 25.5 it's transformed to 2.36 see 24.7 I had substituted for x bar here in this x bar I substituted 25.5 after calculation you will get the z value as minus 1.41 here 2.36 we need to find the area between these two z scores okay standard normal distribution only so according to the um, central limit theorem this we are using the second point here n value is greater than 30 so you get approximately normal distribution like this so you know how to find the area between these two z values by using the uh, table so so like this we need to go the left side uh, left right uh, left of the area to the uh, left of minus 1.41 is 0 0.0793 area to the uh, left of 2.36 is 0 0.9909 we need to subtract these two values to get the value in between minus 1.41 and uh, 2.36 the area is 0.9116 so this is the method how to find the probability for the sampling distribution probabilities for uh, x and x bar this is another example 
An education finance corporation claims that the average credit card debit debts carried by undergraduates are normally distributed with a mean dollar three one seven three and the standard deviation of dollar one one two zero. What is the probability that a random selector randomly select an undergraduate who is a credit card holder has a credit card balance less than dollar two seven zero zero? So in the previous problem we had seen uh, the probability between two values. Here we are going to see uh, the probability which is less than dollar two seven zero zero. So in the normal distribution for x is less than 2700 this one we need to transform into z value so the mean value is here in at the center 3173 so 2700 will comes to the left of 3173 so from the table we need to find the this value before that we need to convert this x value to z so by using the formula so x bar minus mu by sigma Simply I had substituted that and it is converted into z value. Mm, now for this z value we need to find the from the table the area to the left of minus 0.48. It comes as uh, 0.3372. So this is the answer. Okay. You randomly selected 25 graduates. Okay who are credit card holders. What is the probability that that mean credit card balance is less than dollar so in the previous problem what is the question here they are asking uh, randomly selected undergraduates which is normally distributed here they have mentioned it is normally distributed so straight away i had used the formula like before uh, but in this example your n value was see in the second section your n value is less than 30 uh, even though it is less than 30 what is the probability but the population is normally distributed no so what is the probability that the mean credit card balance is less than dollar two seven zero zero so for that we need to use the formula mu x bar comes as three one seven three same thing so we are going for the sampling distribution keep it in mind hmm? so sigma x bar we need to use the standard formula to get the value as two to four so normal distribution value is this one where x bar is less than 2700 but we need to use this formula please note it mu and sigma by root 10 we need to substitute like this so you are getting minus 2.11 we need to find the left of minus 2.11 the area comes as 0 0.0174 So from this the probability for x and x bar interpretation there is a 31-34% chance that an undergraduate will have a balance less than $2,700 but there is only a 2% chance that a mean of a sample of 25 will have a balance less than. So this is unusual event only 2% here because in the previous problem you are getting this one so only two percentage for uh, chance that the mean of the mean of the sample of 25 will have a balance less than 2700 it is possible that the sample is unusual or it is possible that the corporation claims that the mean is dollar uh, three one seven three is incorrect so this answer no two percentage is unusual so therefore we can claim the corporation as incorrect having that new value as 3173 so so far we have seen how to form the sampling distribution verify the properties and we have interrupted the central limit theorem by using some example and we apply the central limit theorem to find the probability of the sample mean okay students so far i had uh, i am going to end up this section in this section we have seen all these things okay so, so we will do some activity related to the uh, central limit theorem the first one the population has a mean of 80 and a standard deviation of 12 the samples of size 36 are selected from the population here please note it the n value is more than 30 so it's a large sample describe the sampling distribution of x bar so if it is n value is more than 30 which is a large sample means it approximates the normal distribution i'm right 
So we need to calculate the mu x bar. So keep in mind the mu x bar is same as the pop, uh, population mean as ET in all the options you are getting. So this one, these two will not come because we are approximate normal and we need to find the sigma x bar by using the uh, formula sigma x bar is equal to sigma by root 10 by using that what value it comes please find out whether c or d the answer so you will get the sigma x bar as true so c is the answer the next problem an american children watch an average of 25 hours of television per week with a standard deviation of 8 hours a random sample of 40 children is selected. What is the probability that the mean number of hours of television they watch per week is less than 22? So here it is not mentioned as a normal distribution. But here you can have that n value is more than 30. So you can use the sampling distribution formula to find the value for. Uh, probability that the mean of hours is less than 22 okay less than 22 we need to convert this x value 22 to ez by using the formula z equal to x bar minus mu x bar by sigma by root 10 okay please use that formula to find out the to find to convert that uh, x bar 22 to z value and then use the table to find out the answer as 0 0.0089 okay students i am going to end up this session and uh, please uh, go through all the problems and do some formal problem also uh, uh, okay and you can ask it out see you bye bye